Hello, good people. Welcome to Comfy UI 101 Part 5. In today's video, I'm going to walk you through how we can do a simple text image flux workflow. Now, if this happens to be your first time on my channel or this is the first video you're watching, make sure to check out the other four parts. Otherwise, none of this is going to make any sense. And for those of you that have been following along, make sure you watch the video on the different model types in order to follow along. So to start, I want you to go into your workflows. Hopefully you saved it or if you saved it locally, and bring in the workflow that we did last session that had both the SDXL text to image and the image to image workflow. So it should look like this. We have our SDXL text to image basic workflow. And then underneath, let me toggle this on. We have our simple image to image workflow. We're going to convert these to flux and keep it all on the same workspace. And we're also going to touch these up a little bit based on your personal preference. So to start, as always, everything you need is going to be linked in the description below. I have a Google Doc here of all the models and text encoders and everything you need. So I want you guys to go into this document and we're going to download the FP8 all in one. This is 17 gigabytes. So if you have at least an eight gigabyte card, you should be fine. That's what I have and it works fine in ComfyUI. So download this one, the all-in-one. You just got to click here. And you'll get a link to the Hugging Face page. If you don't have an account, make sure to sign up in order for you to download these models. Then all you have to do is click on the download button here. Let me zoom in here. And as you see, 17 gigabytes. Now where you want to save this is in your main ComfyUI folder. In my case, I have it on my D drive, ComfyUI tutorials, ComfyUI Windows Portable, then ComfyUI. So your address path is going to look very different than mine. Because it's an all-in-one model, it can go into your usual checkpoints folder. So you want to look for models. Within models, you should see a folder here called checkpoints. Okay. So go ahead and save it in there. And then the other model I want you to download is the FP8 unit version, which is this one that requires you to load the VAE and text encoders. And don't worry if you don't need these models after you can delete them. So we'll go ahead and click on this same thing. And you'll notice that this one is only 12 gigabytes. Well, just under. So go ahead once again, download this. Now this model won't go into our checkpoints. In our models folder, there is a folder called unit. Okay. So we want to open that one up and save it within the unit folder. You see, I've got my FP8 one right here. And then lastly, we're going to download one of the GGUF models. So go ahead and open this link up. And again, based on your system, you want to download one of these Q models. I suggest anywhere from Q4 to Q8. Even on my card, I can run the Q8 fine. It's just the loading times are a little slow, even at 12 gigabytes. But if you're a little skeptical and you want to keep things nice and small, I suggest this one, the Q4KS version. You can click on the arrow here and download it from here. And we also want to download the GUF models in the unit folder. Now we also need the text encoder. So if we scroll down towards the middle here, you see there's a section for text encoders. Go ahead and open up the first one here. And depending on your system, you can download the FP16 or FP8. Just be aware the FP16 is 9.79 gigabytes, where the FP8 is only 4.89. And you want to download these into a folder called Clip, which is also under ComfyY Models Clip. There are also GUF versions of these text encoders. If you recall, the benefit is that the file sizes are smaller. So even if you were to use a Q8 version, it's only five gigabytes. For this demo, I'm going to use the Q4KS version. It's only 2.74 gigabytes. And you can also download them in the same clip folder. Lastly, we also need the VAE. We'll click on that link. Oh, that, <laughs> that's what happens when you're not logged in or if you don't have an account. Let me log in here. So this one's only 335 megabytes super small. Go ahead and download that. They've named it AE.safeTensors. You can leave it if you want. 
or you can rename it to something like Flex VAE. In any case, once again, ComfyUI models, you'll see a folder for VAE at the bottom. Open that up and save it within that folder. Now, in order for us to use the GUF models, we also need to download a new custom node. So let's head into our manager at the top here go to custom nodes manager and there are two custom nodes that i want you guys to install the first one is comfy ui gguf you just gotta put it in your search box and then comfy ui essentials click on the check boxes here and click on install reset comfy ui relaunch and let's get started let's go ahead and copy everything we're going to hold Control alt select everything it does not pick up the background here so we're going to hold control again click on that make sure you see the highlight and we're just simply going to hit control c let's go over to this side wherever your mouse is once you hit control v to paste it's going to paste it in that area and yes copy the bypass node too and then we're just going to fix it here and let's zoom in and change this to flux generation or flux text image it's really up to you what you want to call it and you see in our bypass switch we now have enable flux generation now let's make sure to turn off the sdxl ones Oh, if you see this where the switch isn't working, chances are the bypasser is on the group. So we want to remove that, just lift it up. So we should be able to toggle it off now. You see now it's off. Let's check the one below. Yeah, see it's hovering over the workflow there. We don't want that. Let's turn this off. So we see both of our SDXL workflows are off. All right, let's get started with Flux. So when we go to the load checkpoint node here, now you should be able to choose the Flux FP8. I've got a lot more models because as I said, I reroute this to my main hard drive, but you should be able to load the all-in-one model. And theoretically, this will run Flux fine. All we need to do, if you recall in the last video, it doesn't use CFG. It uses distilled CFG, but in Comfy UI, it's called Flux Guidance. We'll get there in a second, but change that to one and then just put 20 steps. Let's put the seed to random. So sampler name, we want Euler, scheduler, beta. Let's just go ahead and run that. And you're gonna find that even with this basic workflow that we did for SDXL, we can still use it to run a simple flux generation. By the way, if your LoRa loader is on, make sure to toggle it off. And as you can see, we ran the generation fine. However, with Flux, as I mentioned, it doesn't use CFG. So what we're going to do is we're going to add distilled CFG, or in this case, in Comfy UI, it's called Flux Guidance. So anywhere on the workspace, go ahead and right click, add node under advanced and conditioning you're going to see a section for flux. Let's click on that. Right below, you see flux guidance. This is going to be our distilled CFG in Comfy UI. It's called flux guidance. You'll notice it's got two conditioning inputs, okay? So let's use our brains. It needs two conditioning inputs. So we have a conditioning input here, and then the other one here is in positive. So we have to put it in between. We're gonna have to move our workflow a little bit around. I'm just gonna stretch out the corner here and we're gonna make some space. Again, you can arrange this any way you want. I like to keep it linear until I'm done with the workflow. And then I do a little rearranging. I'm going to select all of these and just push this over a little. Let's take this flux guidance node. I'm going to adjust the size. And then we just have to connect this to this and then this input to positive. Now, when it comes to flux, as I've said in previous videos, it doesn't need a negative prompt. But when we do it this way, we still need to input something to the case sampler. So what we can do here, if you want, you can just click on this round circle here and it's gonna close that node and we can just tuck it away. Now, if you wanna keep things consistent in color, you can do that as well. And as we discussed in the video previously, you can set this to whatever range between two to 3.5 is recommended. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it at 3.5. Now that's one way we can do this. The second way we can combine these two nodes by using a flux clip text encoder. So let's again go anywhere on the workspace, right click, add node, advanced, 
conditioning, flux, and then select clip text encoder flux. Now, if we look at this node, it's got two places where we can prompt. You'll notice it says clip L here and T5 XXL. These are two different styles of prompting. I'm not going to go heavily into it, but basically the way SDXL used to prompt is called a Buru style prompting. So it's like tagging woman wearing a dress, comma, walking in the street, comma, sunset lighting, comma. That's how most of us learned how to prompt. With the T5 text encoder, it accepts more natural language. So that same prompt, you could put woman wearing a dress walking down the street in the city at sunset. So that's the general idea of this. Now we can just put the prompt in the T5 section and be done with it. I'm going to do a prompting video soon, so we'll go deeper into that. But you'll notice with this node, we already have the flux guidance here included. So with that being said, we can get rid of the clip text encoder here. We can get rid of the flux guidance here and just use this. We'll keep the negative prompt note and then we'll connect clip to clip and then conditioning to positive and that's it. We'll give our color once again. Then you can enter your prompt in this area here. And by doing it this way, it's a lot cleaner. So we have less nodes now. One of the adjustments I want to make to this workflow is the empty latent. For some of you, you might think, you know, inputting your dimensions here is sort of an extra step. So I want to show you a node that makes that a little bit easier. Once again, we're going to right click, go into add nodes. Earlier, we installed the Comfy UI Essentials and you should see that option here now. So we're going to click on Essentials and go into Utilities. And then you should see this one called empty latent size picker. So what the size picker is, it's still the empty latent, but we have pre-made sizes that we can select from. Often like to use 832 by 1152 or 896 by 1152. Let's remove the old empty latent. We'll bring this guy over here. Then we have to connect the latent input to this input here, just like that. Give it a color and you can just increase the batch size to whatever amount you want to do. The width and height inputs you can leave empty. These will come in handy later as we work on this workflow. And for now, don't worry about the width and height override. So in terms of a basic flux workflow, that's all you need to do if you're using an all-in-one flux model. Now I'm going to show you the unit versions and the unit versions can be handy, especially when you start adding LoRa's control net and you really want to control the file sizes of the models you're using. Now to do that, let's start with the FP8 unit, okay? Now if you recall, an all-in-one model has the model itself, which is called the unit, the clip, and VAE. So what we'll need to do, let's get rid of this. So once again, we're going to right-click, add node. This time we're going to go into advanced loaders, and you'll see load diffusion model and dual clip loader. So let's select both of those. I'll go in once again here. So for the diffusion model, this is the unit model. We have the FP8 version, okay? I've named it FP8 unit so I can tell them apart. And then under dual clip loader, this is where we want to install the text encoders. So we'll select clip L and the T5 XXL FP8 version. Now very important for the dual clip loader, we want to change this to flux, otherwise you're going to get an error. And for the load diffusion model, the weight D type, you can leave it on default, but you can experiment with these. If you select this one with FP8 fast at the end, it should run a little bit faster, but you can experiment between these ones. Typically I leave it on default and it'll select the best one. Okay, and lastly, we need the VAE. So once again, right click, add node, we're going to go into loaders and load VAE, and then we want to select the correct VAE. And just like we did with the all-in-one checkpoint loader, we just need to connect the inputs. So model to model, clip to clip, and then VAE is way over here. We're going to connect that. 
And I think you know by now how uh, particular I am about these noodles. So I'm going to just arrange them by holding Alt on these points. There we go. And then let's uh, change the color just to keep things consistent. So that's the difference of using a unit diffusion model. You're loading the unit model, the clip text encoders, and the VAE separately. Now you'll notice that even though we put the guff models in the unit folder, it doesn't show up here. That's because we need to use a different node. If you recall, we installed two custom nodes. So again, right click, go into add node. Now you're gonna see the section here called bootleg. This is the custom node from City 96 And when you select that, you'll see unit loader. This unit loader is basically the same thing as this node, but the format is different. It accepts the guff format. Theoretically, we can use just this loader, connect it, remove this, and then stay with the dual clip loader. But even if we use this FP8 clip text encoder, if you recall, it's just under five gigabytes. So if you wanted to use a smaller file size, say we wanted to use the Q4 T5 text encoder, we can load that as well. Let's go into add node, bootleg, you'll see dual clip loader here. And it's basically the same thing, just in the GUF file format. So we have our clip L, and you see here we have the Q4 GUF text encoder. So the same thing, we can just delete these, bring these over, might as well give it some color, and connect our inputs. Now in terms of performance, I know the GUF models tend to load slower. In terms of generation time, they're probably going to be slower than using an all-in-one, for example. And it really depends on your system. For me, the FP8 unit is slightly faster, where the GUF models are always slower by a few seconds. Now, before we move on to image to image for flux, I want to give you an option here. One of the benefits of using the all-in-one is that we don't have to have two workflows for SDXL and flux. So what I'm going to do is get rid of these and just bring up our load checkpoint node here, our all-in-one. And because we have SDXL models and flux models on the same checkpoint folder, we can use these exclusively, not having to switch between workflows. And I'll explain to you why that is. So I'm just going to hook these up quickly and we're going to go back to the original workflow and just have the standard clip text encoder and the flux guidance note. We'll hook these up. So here's our original flux workflow using the all in one. Let's say I generate an image in flux and I decide, Hey, I want to use SDXL. What we can do is just bypass flux guidance, right click, click on bypass. That will allow us to use the CFG again. And then we can just load in any SDXL model here. I'm going to go ahead and oh, I have to reconnect this again. With all the fiddling, it got turned off. There we go. Now I can go ahead and generate with SDXL. It's going to skip flux guidance and just run as usual for SDXL. Oh, I left the CFG at one. <laughs> Let's put that to six. Much better. It's really up to you the kind of workflow you're doing. Again, as we progress in this series and we start to do control nets and add more complex stuff, maybe it's better to use the unit models in terms of saving system resources. But for regular generation, if your system can handle the all-in-one checkpoints, personally, I find this more easier and efficient to do. And then whenever I want to use Flux, I just have to turn on the Flux guidance bring the CFG back to one and I'm ready to go with flux. So if you choose to do this, we can even put SDX cell and flex generation. And then there's no need for this copy here. We can delete it if we wanted to just bring everything over. So now we have one section for both SDXL and flux standard generation.